Structures are generally designed in large pieces like a building frame. However, they're constructed in small segments linked together by connection elements. And as the saying goes, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. So you can have the strongest beam in the planet, but if the connection capacity is not congruent with the beam capacity, you're essentially just wasting material on the bank. And to design a connection, you first must understand the load path within the elements connecting the members. So today we're gonna go through the forces acting on boats in a side plate shear connection. And let me know in the comments if you'd like to see part two on a moment connection. Let's start with an easy one, a side plate shear connection. So this is by far the most common connection used in the construction industry and the reason being is that it's a cheap and easy to fabricate and construct connection. So you can use it to connect a beam to a column or a beam to a beam and it's simply a plate welded to a supporting member and bolted to a supported member. So let's imagine we have this frame into design which is a column, a column and a beam and a uniformly distributed load. So it's a simply supported beam and the shear force diagram would look like this and this is the connection that we're gonna have to design. So before we go ahead, bear in mind that we have to check the plates, the welding and the bolts. But today we're gonna focus only on the bolts. If you guys are interested in the other calculations, we can go through the plate and welding calculation in another video. So let me know in the comments. Now you have two ways of treating this connection. You can either imagine the side plate as an extension of the web of the beam or you can imagine the plate welded to the column and then that plate will cantilever from the column, right? And the bolts become a hinge point. A hinge point is a point that can freely rotate. So the first option is the behavior for the case where the connection is made to a flexible support. While the second option is the behavior for the case of a stiff support. So pay, pay attention to this because this is where a lot of engineers will get wrong. So for a stiff support, we designed the boats for the V-star shear force only. So that's your typical V-star divided by the number of boats, and that's the shear force that you can design the boat. However, for flexible support, we should design the boats for the V-star, and also for the V-star times the eccentricity between the centroid of the boat group and the support, which is our design bending moment M star. So the Australian Institute of Steel Construction says that for flexible connections, supports can be considered as either theoretically stiff or flexible. Um, no support is purely flexible, nor purely stiff, but rather lies somewhere between the two extremes. For example, the degree of column flange flexing, which occurs in the between connection wheel, blah, 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 blah. So unfortunately, at the present state of knowledge of this connection behavior, it is not possible to quantify the situation for each individual connection. So therefore, we're gonna always use the flexible support design model and account for the bending moment, all right? It's a safer and it's it will take only an extra 30 seconds to do it, so let's go with this um, design model. Now we're gonna design a side plate with a single line of four bolts and the vertical shear force in each bolt is pretty straightforward, right? It's just V star divided by the number of bolts and we get VS. And the design bending moment is V star times the eccentricity. And this eccentricity will act in the centroid of the bolt group. And it will result in horizontal shear forces on each and every bolt. The magnitude of each one of these horizontal shear forces will be different depending on the distance from the centroid. And what I mean by that is the further away from the centroid, the higher the force. So VM is the shear force on the very top bolt and also in the very bottom bolt because their distance to the bolt group centroid is the same. We also have VM1, which is the smaller shear force acting on the other two bolts. And as an engineer, we're going to design 
the worst case scenario because we're not going to specify different bolt size in in the same connection we're not going to specify two m20s at the top and bottom and then two m16 in the middle now the distance to the centroid of this bolt to the centroid of the bolt group is dm and we're going to call the distance from the centroid of this bolt to the centroid of the bolt group of d1 so this is the free body diagram you know that structural engineers like systems in equilibrium right we love motionless structures and if the sum of the forces or moments to a point is not equal to zero your structure is probably walking or moving and that's not good okay we like motionless structures so a little bit of mathematics here m star minus vm times dm times 2 minus vm1 times d1 times 2 needs to be equal to zero right that's the bend the sum of the bending moments to any point of the system needs to be equals to zero and then we get in this point and this point is the centroid of the bolt group m star is equal to 2 vm dm plus 2 vm1 times d1 and now using similar triangles we know that the ratio of the dimensions of this big triangle here needs to be equal to the ratio of the dimensions of this small triangle that means that the base of this triangle here which is vm divided by the height of this triangle which is dm needs to be equal to the base of this little triangle here which is vm1 divided by the base of this little triangle which is d1 so resolving this equation for vm1 we have that vm1 is equal to vm times d1 divided by dm substituting this equation here on this one here we get that m star is 2 vm dm plus 2 times vm d1 divided by dm times d1 and a little bit of arithmetics we have that let's just go let's just jump straight to the final formula you can stop the video and go through these calculations uh, we get that the force the shear force due to the bending moment is equal to the bending moment m star times dm which is this distance here divided by 2 dm square plus 2 d1 square so that's the formula you need to know in order to design this shear side plate shear connection now finally we know that the magnitude of a vector can be calculated by taking the square root of the sum of the squares of its components and what i mean by that is that the total shear in this boat for this connection is going to be square root of vm square plus vs square and that's the shear that you need to design the bolt in this connection so let's do a numerical example here so you can cement this concept in your head so we've got a beam simply supported beam we did the, the shear force diagram and we got that we have a 200 kilonewton shear at the end of the beam and there is an eccentricity of 50 millimeters the spacing between the bolts is 70 millimeters and the edge clearance is 35 millimeters okay so usually the spacing between bolts is 2.5 times the bolt diameter and the distance from the centroid of the bolt to the edge of the plate is around 1.75 times the bolt the bolt to uh, the bolt diameter now you double check that later if you want so the m star is equal to v star times e m star is equal to 200 times 50 that gives us 10 10,000 kilonewtons millimeters and let's use the formula that we just worked out okay we can use this formula for all the connections the shear connections that we have which are the same configuration of bolts so if you have two lines of bolts that's gonna change the formulas because now you're going to have um you're going to have a centroid which is not which not align with the y-axis so you you have to redo that you have to work out all that calculation uh, that we did previously and figure out a different formula if you can't figure that out just let me know and we do a video on that again but but with this formula you can use for a single line of bolts okay so vm is equal to m star which is 10,000 kilonewtons millimeters times dm and dm is the distance from 
the top or bottom bolt to the centroid of the group and that is 70 plus 70 divided by 2 that's 105 so 2 times 105 squared plus 2 times d1 square d1 is the distance from the centroid of these other two bolts here to the centroid of the group so it's just 70 divided by 2 35 square so we know that vm is 42.9 kilonewtons 42.9 kilonewtons is the shear is the horizontal shear force due to the bending moment that was resulted from that eccentricity now the shear force due to the shear force the shear force in each bolt due to the reaction the 200 kilonewtons is simply the reaction divided by the number of bolts which is 200 divided by 4 and that's 50 kilonewtons and again the total shear on that bolt is going to be vm square plus vs square and then you get the square root of that and we get the vt which is the total force on that bolt is going to be 60 60 kilonewtons so we just apply this number to all the bolts even though the two middle bolts the, the two bolts in the middle of this connection they will take a smaller shear force we're just going to design every bolt for 60 60 kilonewtons so if we look at this table it will give us the capacity of each bolt size in shear that's that's for a bolt in that's for high strength bolts okay so m16 gives you 59.3 kilonewtons capacity shear force which you is less than 60 60 so we cannot use m16 and the next size is going to be m20 which gives us 92.6 kilonewtons in shear so we get we're just going to use four m20s 8.8 .8 structural bolts and now you know how to design a simple side plate shear connection and you can do it properly thank you very much and i'll see you in the next video